random, but I just am coming back from D&D, and I taught myself how to cry on command today. We're getting into some backstory stuff that I'm really excited about, and my character has some very emotional stuff, so I thought it would be fun to cry at the D&D table. So I taught myself how to cry. It went pretty well. Uh, I did get a whole tear out. We play once a week, and next week I'm actually going to be on a business trip, so a lot of the emotional stuff I literally just prepared for, I'm going to have to do all of it on Discord, so oh well. It gets me really hyped to DM and stuff myself, so I know that I still have so much to learn. I'm doing a lot of this, probably like approaching it from a very like amateurish perspective in general, but I am reading the books, I'm learning stuff, it's really fun, uh, I'm really interested to see like what kind of like things the DM does with the nuggets that I give him, so that's been really cool. Um, but as far as, like, reading, which is what you're probably here for, I am currently reading We Free the Stars, which is the second book in the Sands of Arawea series. This is a book I'm reading for the Fantasy Series Book Club. I really like book one that much. I thought it was between okay and good, but I didn't love it. Partially, it is because I feel like when you play stuff like D&D, &D, you get into these fantasy worlds and you do these really cool things. And I kind of feel like We Hunt the Flame had vibes like that, but I just felt like it could have been so much more, and the pacing definitely is something that uh, bothers a lot of people, including me. Um, the writing itself is beautiful. The characters, I'm not in love with them. And unfortunately, this is the kind of series where if you don't really love the characters, you're not going to be very invested in what goes on. So I do have like five hours and something minutes left of the audiobook. This is like an 18-hour audiobook. So I really worked on this really hard today to read a lot of this, um, so that way I can work on my other books. I'm excited to be done with the book. Let's put it that way. Uh, not necessarily like I hate it or anything like that, but I just want to see what happens next, and hopefully it all pays off because... Uh, I don't know, like, some things are happening, but I don't think it could, like, justify an 18-hour audiobook so far for what has happened. But I am also working on a couple other books, including the big one, Priory of the Orange Tree. So this is the book I keep putting off all the time, but I thought it would be good to vlog it to prove that I have read it, because you may have noticed in my TBR in my car video, uh, I did talk about Priory and said, like, enough is enough, I gotta read this book. I keep saying I'm gonna read it, and I never do, so let's raise the stakes. If I don't finish the book by the end of the month, then I will allow a friend to pick a book off my shelves and I will mail it to them. So really like force myself to read this book, which I like anyway, like of what I've read of it. I'm on like chapter three, which is where I've been for a while. Uh, Priory of the Orange Tree is a fantasy story. It's super thick. It's like 800 pages and it has matriarchal society with newly emerging dragons, which used to not be around. Uh, it sounds like dragons used to be around way, 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 way back and they were not around at all until very recently when they just suddenly appeared and it's like what are you doing here so we are following in the chapter that i'm in a character who is i think related to like not the princess but like princess adjacent character who uh she's just about to meet with so you can tell i'm like super early on this this is like page 11 or something like that so i'm excited to update you when i finally make some more progress than just that but we have met some characters i like them so far i like them more than the characters in we hope the flame we are also going to meet a very special guest later on, hopefully. I think that's going to be this vlog. Uh, we're going to see someone very special on camera, so stay tuned for that because you are not going to want to miss meeting them. Really exciting. Okay, so yes, this is the vlog. Welcome to the vlog. I don't know why I started with D&D crying for a vlog, but hey, welcome to the reading vlog. This is supposed to be a reading lifestyle vlog, uh, and we're going to do it. Today is September 21st, so we got to finish Pirate of the Orange Tree by, what, 30 days named September 30th. September 30th at midnight, we gotta be done. Done. Or else, I will suffer. I kind of feel like I'm not, I'm not getting it. Like, so many people love this book because they love the characters, and I don't love the characters at all. Um, I mean, I enjoy Altair, but everybody else, I feel like they're just very one-dimensional. I just don't really care about them. And uh, the second book definitely has picked up because the pacing in the first book is extremely slow. But I just don't know when I'm going to start caring about these characters because I just don't really care about them that much. I tend to really, really like flawed characters that are not necessarily like really redeemable. I like multifaceted characters on a scale of good to bad, where are you? They fall very heavily in the like morally gray, to leaning towards like kind of bad. It's really my preference for characters. And a lot of these people, even the people who are like, oh my god, I'm so evil, I'm so bad, uh, nobody will ever love me because I'm so bad, they're like good guys, you know, like everybody is kind of like a goody two shoes in a way, even the people who are like murdering people out here. I just get the feeling that they were like lining up to be like line leaders in school. Like, I think it's cool that it has nothing to do with, um, like a lot of fantasy seems to be very like European, medieval, high fantasy, like I guess what you would think of for like Lord of the Rings or something like that. And this isn't like that at all. Um, and I like that. I really like those kinds of 
uh, fantasy stories because they're different than what I'm used to and what I think like generally gets published the most often. So this is something fresh, and I like that. But I just kind of feel like as far as the actual plot of what's going on with the characters, it feels kind of weak to me. Um, and that is bearing in mind that I know I'm not really like the intended audience. I do think I probably would have thought it was like super cool when I was younger, but I guess it's just not doing it for me. Um, even like as we get all these like plot twists and these big reveals and stuff, probably because it all just sort of happened at the end of the book when I was already like slogging through it, I just could not force myself to really care that much about it or treat it with the amount of severity that it probably deserves. The thing is, the writing is very beautiful. It's lyrical-ish, but not too, too flowery. I don't really love like made up curse words, which they do a lot in here. Uh, there's like sweet snow and salt and teeth and like skies and whatever. I'm just like, just, just say fuck, like just say fuck like an adult. A lot of stuff keeps centering around one of the main characters, Zephira, and everyone's like, oh my god, Zephira, this and that. It just kind of feels like a real big like Mary Sue moment, and it just makes me dislike characters more because they're just perfect at everything. Her thing is literally that she is like pure of heart, and everything revolves around her being pure of heart. Oh my god, she's so great, she's so wonderful, everybody loves her so much, but she's just such a sacrificial lamb that she would do anything for everybody else. It's like, girl, give me a character flaw. Give me something that's wrong with you so I can relate to you. But at this point, I've been talking for like 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go. You're gonna see the progress. I'm probably gonna finish this. I'm gonna work on some priory and some other things. So I will talk to you then uh, and stop hunching over in my bathroom to do this blog update. So yeah, I will talk to you then. Bye. A car being really suspicious kind of near my house. Okay, the car left. Great. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I thought it was fine. I gave it three stars. I liked it better when I was reading it physically, I will say. Um, I can't really explain why, but I just feel like sometimes when the narrators talk, they don't always enunciate all the words, so I missed exactly what's going on, but because of the general fact that I don't really care about the characters, I just don't care enough to, like, check every single thing out that they're talking about, which obviously impedes my enjoyment of the story because I don't know what the hell is going on, so, you know, partially that's, like, if you, if you care, like, you should give a book a chance if you're actually gonna, like, really, really, truly try to care about it, but I don't know, there's just something that I was very detached about this story, and I just could not settle in and care the way that other people do. I wish I cared about these characters the way other people do, but I just don't, um, Whoops, but anyway, we're gonna go to the library now, and I'm gonna go get a book, um, and, uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm so, like, in my D&D headspace right now, I just really, really want to do, like, D&D stuff, it's so fun, it's so much fun, like, for uh, people who don't play it, like, by choice, what are you doing? Like, it's so much fun, literally, just give it a try, if you, if you can find other people who play it, and, like, it, especially if you can find, like, a really good dungeon master, obviously, but, like, god, it's so much fun, it's so much fun, so I'm gonna go get, um, the third the Adventure Zone graphic novel, because I had it before, and I had to return it to the library, and I think I actually have to go pay some fines at the library, whoops. So, alright, let's go! I am checking in. So yesterday I told you I went to the library and so it's time for the little haul of what I got. So first off, the reason I really went there was because I needed to go get Pedals to the Metal, the Adventure Zone, Volume 3. This is on my TBR for the month and I had to return it before, but now I have it. Um, as I mentioned in my TBR video, I love the Adventure Zone, the podcast. I really, really, really love it so much. It is literally my favorite story of all time. Um, the overarching story in the podcast, it just totally blew me away. And it is kind of different in translation to the graphic novel because there's just certain jokes that like land better in the moment because they're more organic. And like, it's truly like based on a podcast of four people riffing off of each other while playing D&D. And uh, it's really hard for me to sell this to somebody without explaining what is going on. And I just think it's more fun to not really know. But I, oh my god, I don't know. I just love it so much. It's so great. And it's just kind of fun to see everything on the page. And it is slightly different from the things that I imagined, but it's still really fun. And I started reading some more of it yesterday. It's already a scene where I was like, oh, oh no, I know 
what this is and like I know what's happening oh my god the emotion because there are some emotional things that happen in volume three so the other things that I got um I got the order of time this is some stuff about physics and time and like how can we can remember the past we don't remember the future if time is just a flow of time and we exist in time how come that's the way it works this is written by the same guy who wrote seven brief lessons to physics I think it's called um which was another cool book and I read it I don't know two two and a half years ago or something like that uh, and I really liked it. I thought it was really cool. It just breaks down a lot of assumptions about physics uh, as far as time. And that stuff is really cool to me. So I picked that up. I hopefully will have some time to parse through it. Um, and then I also got Questland because I was saying, oh my god, I love D&D &D so much. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I have to wait until next session for my own session to play it. Or I would have to plan a lot of stuff for me to host it and DM it. So, oh man, I wish I could just read something that's like D&D. &D. So I went and I found this, um, incidentally, at the library, which has a nice D20 on it. And uh, this is a story about a woman who is sort of like hired to be a mercenary on this weird private island that seems a lot like Westworld if it wasn't about the like world out west but instead it was about like a fantasy world she is offered this job by a famously eccentric billionaire tech genius so i guess he has devised this island and for some reason she has to go on it and work on it and stuff i don't know it just seems fun it's and then i also i also found this i didn't know that this was at the library i barely even knew this was out yet for the longest time um, a song for the wild build is by oh can't see it is by becky chambers um becky chambers wrote along with to a small angry planet that whole series and then she also wrote um to be taught you fortunate which was my favorite book of 2020 i read it near the very end of the year and it was my favorite it was so good so good so i know this is a new series because i also saw that the second book's cover was just announced which is really exciting uh, and this says, It's been centuries since the robots of Panga gained self-awareness and laid down their tools. Centuries since they wandered and moss into the wilderness, never to be seen again. Centuries since they faded into myth and urban legend. One day the life of a tea monk is upended by the arrival of a robot there to honor the old promise of checking in. The robot has one question. What do people need? But the answer to that question depends on who you ask and how they're going to need to ask it a lot. And the other thing I got was the, um, I guess, three and a half, uh, three and a half? third and a half edition of the Dungeon Master's Guide for D&D because I do have over here the fifth edition guide which is also from the library um but I just am so interested in like creating those kinds of stories and um you know if I really want to pursue DMing and stuff I have to obviously come up with some cool stories so uh rather than just purely pulling from pre-made adventures which is definitely a thing that I am still doing uh, I thought it'd be fun to just learn some more about how it all works because the rules might be slightly different between editions of playing the game in like third and a half edition versus fifth edition but i'm sure that as far as you know creating a story there's probably different information between the books so that's what i got it for anyway what am i reading right now what am i reading right now excellent question i did work on ruin and rising last night actually um so i've been trying to buddy read this with mo for the longest time and just neither of us have actually like picked the book up for so long and i finally started it and i am what? Uh, I would say I'm like 40% of the way through it now, which is pretty fast, actually. I just turned it on while I was doing some bullet journaling stuff last night. The thing is, I don't really remember what happened in Siege and Storm, so I kind of think I need to Google that and remember what it is and try to just avoid spoilers for all the other books and stuff, but uh, I remember Nikolai as a concept. I am enjoying the third book given that, so um, yeah, I don't know. I guess there's just something like cozy about some of the things that Lee Bardugo tends to write in the Shadow and Bone books. I feel like a lot of people really don't like those books for some reason, but um, when she's describing different settings, you know, obviously it's like they're fighting and somebody's dying. That's not what I mean when I say it's cozy, but when they are describing like, you know, the different places that they're staying or the general, um, I don't know, atmosphere? I guess the atmosphere and the things that she's describing tend to feel very like cozy and like cold wintry sort of thing um and since we are kind of heading into winter now getting there heading into fall uh it feels like a good time to be reading it we have sprints tonight on manda's channel so i'm gonna be on there reading priory uh and i figured i would listen to the audiobook while i am working on some stuff today so that way i can kind of make some more progress rather than just have to read the entire thing physically and then run out of time because it's thursday already and i feel like i get the majority of my audiobook listening done during the work week uh and then weekends are just who knows who knows truly but except for i have like so many live shows this weekend so i can't so that's my that's my update that's my update um this is way too long of an update this is just supposed to be a teeny little book haul i just can't stop talking
diary while I set up my bullet journal stuff, and I'm in trouble. Like, this is my September stuff, and look at all these books I said I was gonna read. I don't know why I made it sound like I was actually gonna read all this stuff, because as of the moment I'm filming this right now is that day, the 24th. I have sprints, and then I probably don't have any time after that because I'm going on a business trip the following week, so I don't know why I committed to all this stuff because some of these are like really freaking thick like obviously Priory is like the biggest boy we've got is the biggest boy we've got it is this big but we all know that the, the rest of this is still pretty freaking huge so my TBR video came out like this day or something like that I don't know one of these days so like she really overcommitted to everything world uh today is Saturday that's right and um, I just got off of reading sprints on Christine and Moe's channel, the Reads Digest. If you don't know them, uh, I don't know where you've been, but I talk about them all the time. And they're great. And we just did some fantasy series reading sprints for our book club. But I already read the book club book, so I spent that time reading Priory. Um, and actually, Sid did a video um, about reading Priory. So I thought it would be a good time to update you on what I think of Priory. Because guess what? I really like it. It's really cool. Um, so obviously, this is a gigantic book and it has intimidated me. But I've realized that now that I have sort of fallen in love with the world and the idea of what's really going on and I'm really curious about what's gonna happen next. I'm really happy that it is as long as it is because it means I get to spend all that time with the characters and really flesh out what's happening in the story and I wouldn't want it to end after like 250 pages or something because uh, there would be so little that Samantha Shannon would be able to show us from what is really going on. So I do believe this is a standalone and I like that it's all contained in this book because there's a lot going on. And okay, I'm just moving you so that I can talk about this. So. Um, let's see. I am about 120 something pages into Priory at this point, and I am really, really enjoying it. I am reading it physically and with audio, and I just find that the atmospheric writing is so lush and it's so well done. Um, it's been a really long time since I've read a book and just felt like I could really picture everything intended for the reader to see, but in so few words, because I, I really feel like Samantha Shannon can write like two sentences and I'm already transported to whatever it is that she wants me to see. And it's really cool. Um, I know part of that is probably my brain filling in the gaps with some things that I'm imagining, but it all is like really, really great. I feel like I'm there as I'm reading about this and some really cool stuff's happening. So it's cool. And then everything goes to shit. And it is really, really bad for everybody uh, that is affected by this thing that just happened obviously. <laughs> um, so yeah, something very, very bad happens for some people here, and they are breaking out because this is not good. This is not what they intended. This is not what should have happened because of their prior held beliefs. Ah, uh, prior re-held beliefs, maybe? So let me just try to sort of like summarize what the book is about without doing any spoilers at all, because I don't think I've actually done that in this vlog yet. So I tried to summarize this faster than I did in the previous clip because I just feel like it's way too long. Okay, there is uh, a huge country and it is split between different areas, the north, south, east, west, and we are mainly looking at the east and the west. In the east, there are uh, dragons, but not quite. They're like little dragons, wyvern, uh, who are not quite dragons, but they're very prominent over there. They actually have a lot of people who train to work with the dragons, and what's very cool is they have some trials over there for people who uh, would specifically be dragon riders, so that's one of the little plot threads that we're following. Um, and in the east, we also have uh, this kind of like grumpy old doctor who is harboring um, a fugitive who is from the West. And in the West, we have the queen of the land. Um, and it seems that for so long as her family lives and their bloodline persists, the nameless one will not arise. Now the nameless one is this big, evil, scary dragon. And there are a lot of other dragons that worked under the nameless one, kind of like his underlings, who are also very scary big dragons. Um, and everyone in the West is very anti-dragon. They really don't like them. Um, however, it does seem that a gigantic dragon just came out of the water in the east, and uh, that is very bad. It is very scary because it implies that the Nameless One perhaps does not sleep so long as this bloodline persists, but might come back. So we are following um, a lot of different plot threads of what's going on in the east and the west. We have a one of the main characters, Eid, in the west, and she is sort of like a uh, lady who waits upon the queen, but she's actually here with a different mission in mind. So there are a lot of people who seem to try to kill the queen in her sleep, because, again, the rumor that as long as she lives stuff would happen. Um, so Eid actually comes in and she assassinates the assassins in order to protect the queen. Um, and she does this because she was tasked with this mission by the Priory uh, of the Orange Tree, which is where she's from. So there is uh, some stuff with that. There are like the political alliances being built. Um, a lot of people don't think the East and the West could ever form an alliance because of this drastic difference in the way that they treat uh, dragons, but it's uh, potentially exactly what they need to do because now it seems that these ancient dragons are awakening after two years of uh, staying underground and never having bothered anybody. So, um, really, really cool. Awesome high fantasy. Dragons. 
pirates, matriarchal queen society, assassins, spies, um, magical powers, grumpy old doctor, and his boyfriend. <laughs> oh my god. Um, and also what's cool is I feel like nobody ever talks about this, but this is queer, and the protagonist, Eid, is black. So I think that nobody really ever mentioned that to me before when I was talking about Priory, uh, until very recently when I posted about it on Instagram. So, um, I really like that. I really like that we have this, uh, focus on a woman of color at, like, pretty much the very center of all the action of, uh, the whole story. So, I don't know. It's really cool. I really like it. I'm really excited to see what happens next, and, uh, I only have so many days to find out what happens next. I did mention before that, like, I am quite a big d, &D nerd, and this has been really fun because there are a lot of, like, tiny little concepts here and there that are built into the plot of Priory, but they're just really inspiring for people who want to kind of, like, craft their own story ideas, which I think is really, really fun. And, um, in D&D, &D, a lot of times you kind of have to build your own, uh, concept of a fantasy world. Uh, from scratch or like you know borrow some ideas here and there and sort of craft it into your own thing and there's just a lot of like really cool things here there are trials uh there's an assassin there's magical powers there's dragons there's pirates like uh, it's so cool it's a matriarchal society which is also pretty fun um but it doesn't mean like you know everything is wonderful because the queen is low-key a bitch and it's cool it's i don't know it's cool it's cool i really like it so far um I, I'm not gonna say like I don't know why I put this off for so long. I know why, but I'm really glad that I'm finally reading it because that's my update for now. I have to actually run and go meet Casey, and then we are going to go to Hannah's graduation. So uh, that's the deal. Oh, I don't know if I said it before, but Casey and I are meeting up today, and we are actually going to go to Hannah's graduation. This is Hannah from the Snow White Reader. She's in New Jersey to graduate with her degree, and uh, we're gonna go cheer her on and hang out for the rest of the day. So I will, of course, take you with me and uh, keep reading Priory. So I'll update you a little bit later. Um, it's gonna be fun because I know Casey gave Priory two stars, and that's bonkers to me right now because this feels like a five star read. <laughs> What did you bring? Oh, hello kids. I brought the love hypothesis <gasps> and the stone sky. Oh my god. Woo. I brought <laughs> and we're a graduation. Let's go ham. driving the plot forward some people got really hurt some people are not making it out of this book alive for sure um and i feel like because i was watching sid's vlog where she said like she's gonna be really upset by the ending 
that you know something big is gonna happen by the end but of course i'm not quite there yet um not even like exactly halfway through yet still have a little bit of a ways to go but um i'm actually currently packing my business trip I have all my like businessy clothes over here and actually i also went to target today to pick up some stuff i asked for some recommendations on instagram about skincare stuff because i don't really know what i'm doing so um i got some recommendations i wasn't able to find everything that was mentioned today because i actually only hit a target but uh after my business trip i'm definitely gonna go like look around like cvs and stuff and see if i can find other stuff because like, i'm not trying to break the bank here but i also would love to actually like know what i'm doing with all this stuff because i never learned how to do this when i was like a teenager or anything i think like probably a lot of other people have this experience but um when i was you know around the age that i guess a lot of other people were learning how to do this kind of stuff uh you know there's always like people who are very like pink and girly and then there are people who like very heavily resisted that and it was like i'm anti-pink i'm anti-girly i'm like i wear all black and i'm like so emo and goth and whatever and um i don't think i was like necessarily like actually like emo and goth or anything but i was definitely not like pink and girly so um i think i was very like resistant to that kind of stuff which kind of sucks because it took me so long to uh realize that you can do all those things and not fall into like certain stereotypes about girls and you can still be whoever you want to be and then you can also look good while you're doing it uh and know what you're doing because it would be so nice to understand how to get like acne under control and stuff like that so i ended up buying this is my little haul i ended up buying cerave foaming facial cleanser i bought some burt's bees stuff this is some toner I ended up nobody recommended this but i ended up getting this like jelly cleanser from elf because it was four dollars <laughs> it was actually 420. it seemed like maybe it would work um and i also got this vitamin c uh thing and i got some hyaluronic acid from cerave as well then also i don't really uh, ever put on sunscreen, which is really bad. So I got some sun bum, um, and a lot of this stuff was recommended by Steph from Stephanie Bookish. Thank you so much. Um, and also Nitty and Nishta and, uh, Nicole and actually like a whole bunch of people that came through on my Instagram story. So thank you very much. Um, I'm really excited to try this stuff out. Um, not every time that my stuff starts running low, I just, I'm like, let's experiment. Let's try something new. So, um, yeah, anyway, you came here to hear about Priory and not about this stuff, but I thought I would just give you a little peek into my life. I am planning to read uh, a pretty big chunk of Priory on the plane tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow is like a regular work day for a couple hours, and then I'm going to head to the airport and then just fly for the rest of the day. Um, and once I arrive, they uh, are taking us out to dinner, the company that um, invited us to this conference. So they're taking us out to dinner, and then Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be the conference. Um, and Thursday, there's going to be like a little bit of conference -y stuff in the morning, and then we're flying home in the evening. But I think we have some time in the middle of the afternoon where we're not really doing anything. So I know Tuesday morning I have some time, so I probably will um, do some priority reading then as well. Of course, I'll also read on the plane home. So my business trip actually completely coincides with the ending of September, so I have to read all of it uh, on my business trip now. But I, I'm pretty confident that I can do it because this is how far I am, like this little, this little bit. And uh, I'm really liking it. It's really easy to keep reading and not feel like confused or anything. Even though this is uh, high fantasy stuff, I've been reading a lot of it by audiobook. Um, this was like my free Audible book that I got for the trial. And I'm so glad I have it because first of all, the audiobook is really good. It's very, very well narrated. It's a single narrator, but she does a really good job of doing all the different voices. So I really like that. Um, and it's also just like very easy to tell who everybody is and what's going on. I like to have the physical next to me just to like make sure that I like definitely know who's who and where things are and also like cross-reference stuff that already happened to make sure that uh like any little like lore drops and stuff i'm definitely like fully getting like little breadcrumbs as samantha shannon really reveals the story also there's certain things that really hit different in the audiobook because i'll read them physically and be like oh that's good but when i listen to it by the audiobook i'm like wow i'm transported i'm really there uh and then other times i'll listen to something in the audiobook and be like i don't know like my brain can't wrap itself around what you're talking about and i'll read it physically and be like oh my god that's so cool so <laughs> this is a case where like i needed to be a hybrid read to fully appreciate everything that samantha shannon has built i'm so happy that i was pushed to do this um so i mean like thank you everybody who didn't have faith in me because now i have spite and now I'm going to finish it. But also thank you, Christine, for coming up with this idea of, um, you know, you got to do it. You got to do it or else let's raise the stakes. And, uh, you know, the, the accountability is very helpful for me. But, um, yeah, I mean, okay, like some, some really wild stuff was going on in Priory right now. Uh, the, the part of the, the crew that's, like, spying for the other kingdom and the dragon racing and, like, all the trials that lead up to that. And, uh, uh, the, I don't know, there's, like, an attack on the castle and the dragons might be emerging again, like the bad dragons. And I can't imagine that this won't be a five-star read because usually when I'm just enjoying a book this much, I I just feel like it has an extra little feeling in it. And it's just so much fun. I'm really, really liking it. <laughs>
fancy shoes that I bought with my big girl job. And now we're going out to dinner. So it's my nice thing. You can't tell because I'm cold. But, oh, I did do my whole face because we do have to take off our masks to eat and stuff. So, hi. Hello. Anyway, I'm going to dinner. I'll see you later. Filet mignon for dinner with mascarpone whipped mashed potatoes. And somebody ordered calamari and prosciutto. No, bruschetta. Why can't I say this word? <laughs> somebody ordered calamari and bruschetta for the appetizer. And then I got this espresso gelato for dessert. I ate so much. It was so good. And it was all free for me, at least. Ugh. Business trips are so far fantastic. Um, I'm having the time of my life. I forgot to talk about the most important thing. We were at dinner and somebody on the other end of the table said something about reading. Like, oh, I read this. And I was like, ooh, I'm trying to listen to this person explain how he made a fortune in China with epoxy. But this guy is talking about reading. So I was like, <laughs> but um, the guy's like, oh, yeah, I like reading. I liked the girl on the train. I liked uh, like the subtle art about giving a fuck. And I liked Ready Player One. And I was like, why'd you say that? Why'd you say that? I thought Girl on the Train was good. I liked it. That was like my first domestic thriller. So I, I was partial to that. I liked it. Um, subtle art about giving a fuck I haven't personally read. I'm sure it's helpful for some people, but also the author is not really a person that I trust to give anybody advice. So, okay. But Ready Player One, really? Seriously? Why? I know there's so many people who love this book on booktube, so it's not like I'm coming for your neck personally. But I just hate that book so much. It's so bad. It's such a misogynistic piece of crap. Oh, I just had to turn back to the epoxy fortune in China conversation because, oh my god, I hate that book so much. But also the thing is, like, everybody at this conference is much older than me, so I'm sure that they lived through the 80s. So the appeal of that book is a lot of the 80s nostalgia stuff that I just don't get slash care about slash... It doesn't justify all of the gross things that were in that book, like the massage noir and the racism and the everything. I just wanted to say I heard about books today, and that was my interaction. Love it. Love it. Having a great time. Anyway, um, I'm excited to go to bed because it's like I have this bed to go to sleep on, but if I don't like it, I'll sleep on that bed where I put my stuff because um, I didn't really unpack it. But see, it's like the versatility. I could be there. I could be here. I could be anywhere. In this room, I need to really seriously work on priority tonight, even though I'm so tired, because tomorrow I have a little bit of time in the morning, assuming that I get up at a reasonable hour before the conference starts, um, and I eat a quick bite, and then I have D&D &D remotely. Everybody's going to do it remoting in. Um, the next thing is conference all day, and a little bit of time in the evening, and then Thursday we have conference in the morning, and it's at, I think, 1 p.m. Denver time, and then we basically just have to, like, get on the plane and go home. So I feel like I'm not going to have that much time, and I still have 400 more pages to go, because I'm now exactly halfway through the book. So I really need to make some progress on Priory, or I'm going to regret it. I agreed to this. I'm not going to cheat. This is a, that's why I'm vlogging this so you can tell that I'm being honest and I'm genuinely reading this thing. But I just want you to know, like, these are some steaks for me. Not like the steak I ate for dinner tonight. Like, these are some steaks. So my food actually just got here. So here's what I have to eat. Hope it's good. So I ordered some bacon and I got some house fries that look like little potatoes. And I also got coffee with creamer and I ordered this thing that was like an egg white omelet type thing. I'm not one for omelets, but this was just egg whites with avocados. And I ended up putting some hot sauce and some honey in it too. My friend, she said, I need your help. She took his face between her hands. Do you remember how I fed you when you were a pup? Something just happened. What? I not. I mean, uh, I guess it makes sense, but like I wasn't expecting that. Oh my god. This book has ways of just writing stuff in that just makes you feel emotional, and it still like shocks you and surprises you, like. I've compared this before to Game of Thrones, and it just kind of feels like it, the way that, like, your characters, your favorite characters, are not necessarily safe. And it's not even, like, the person that this just happened to was my favorite character, but I just really wasn't expecting it. Even though there were, like, clues. What? Uh, I'll be really upset if Ian doesn't make it out alive, because I love her. Her and Loth. I need them to be okay. But I just wasn't expecting this other thing to happen. Oh my god.
So after the conference for the day, I went out with a new friend and we got steaks and these really, really nice desserts. This was creme brulee and a chocolatey cake with pretzels on the side and they were both so delicious. No, I just came back from a really, really nice dinner. Um, this whole conference has been, you know, interesting stuff, engineering stuff, but, um, you know, like uh, not a whole lot of people that I've met that I've been like, wow, I want to have a really riveting conversation with you for hours and hours. But um, there's actually one of the people who works at the company that is throwing the whole conference who invited me out for dinner, and she's just the nicest, and we had such a great time. I actually told her about my booktube channel, so um, if you're watching this, come out, hello. <laughs> um, thank you so much for dinner. Um, and I just had a really great time, and I told her I had to hurry up and read this gigantic book, and she totally understood because she was also a reader. So um, in that sense, I still have quite a way to go for Priory, but I am making some really great progress, and... Last night, I read quite a bit. Let's go check on it right now, actually. So, here's the book. I'm on page... Gosh, I don't even think this is right. I think I read past this um, by audio a little bit before. So I feel like maybe I'm around, like, page 500 and... Maybe, like, 50-something? 555? Something like that? So, as everybody knows, this is an over 800-page book. Um, and I'm trying to read, like, 100 pages a day for the rest of this thing, which is basically just... um right now and tomorrow. So um, I need to at least finish and get up to page like 600 and something. So that way on the flight home, assuming that I do have that like space to myself, I'll be able to finish it, which is actually something I'm now concerned about because um, I don't know who my seatmate's going to be. And sometimes you get on a plane and people start talking to you and you kind of feel obligated to talk back to them. So usually that never happens to me, but I am just like slightly, slightly concerned that maybe I will sit a little bit close to somebody maybe from the conference and then have to talk to them for four hours. And that means that I won't get any reading done, which is terrible um because I have to keep a book away and I just don't want to do that I mean you know I guess everybody sort of maybe not everybody wins but a friend would at least win but I'm too full of spite I won't let that happen so I'm gonna keep reading um some things have happened since I last updated you things are going well um in the kingdom and I am very happy some people have been reunited and it's very sweet and I'm very happy that they are all together again um but you know trouble is still brewing in general and now there is that you know, threat of the Nameless One that's coming, this big, awful, evil dragon who's going to come and probably destroy everything. So it is sort of this epic adventure to try to take down the dragon. So I kind of feel like, you know, you might think like, okay, so you read 500 pages and they haven't even beat the dragon yet. But let me just tell you, like a lot has happened in those 500 pages. And really like the dragon is not what the whole story is about. It's really a lot of about the people involved and what has put them now in this specific location to now enable them to do whatever comes next, I assume. Um, I do want to say, I think somebody uh, I saw on Goodreads recently said something about this being a very long book with a very quick wrap up, which makes me a little bit concerned because so far I am loving this book, but I am really curious about how it's going to wrap up and how it's going to end in a way that's really satisfying. So I do hope that Samantha Shannon will accomplish that. Um, if she does, I don't think that there will be any way I don't rate this book five stars, um, which is, of course, wonderful. Uh, it's very hard for me to update you without spoiling anything, but... Um, I will say there are just so many characters in this thing and I finally like really know who everybody is because I think there are probably like 50 characters, no joke. So I actually kind of think I know who everybody is. I do need to occasionally reference the guide in the back, but I am a little bit proud of that, I will say. So I'm going to try to read. Um, if I get a bunch of reading done, I'm actually going to edit a video tonight um, and I fly back out to New Jersey tomorrow. So hopefully I'll be able to get all that reading done and I will keep all my books because right now I'm experiencing severe FOMB fear of missing books. Anyway, um, let's get reading. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you for a second. I was just taking selfies in that mirror over there, because that's like a nice mirror. You're gonna see the, the selfies on my Instagram, but like, I was listening to the audiobook here while I was taking my selfies, and that's disgusting. It's the end of chapter 55, if that means anything to anyone who has read this book before, but... Gross! Okay, I'm gonna go take some more selfies now. Okay, bye. It's the last day. I have to pack everything up. Room is fully packed and everything. I am heading out to the conference, having some breakfast. We're in a rush. Um, I just got up to chapter 62, I think, uh, for Priory. And, uh, now... We are off.
Hi, so this is the end of the vlog. I have finished priming the orange tree. I actually did it. I did it before September ends. I'm currently filming this in October, but I do promise you I actually did finish it in September. I finished it on the plane on my way home at like 9 p.m. So look at me, like not waiting until midnight. That's incredible and very much not like me. But I did finish it and I really loved it. I gave it five stars and I thought it was fantastic. The whole time I was reading this, I had so many visions of what could be and there were just so many cool things. It was very atmospheric writing, very, very fun stuff going on all the time. Um, and it, it was just so easy to imagine as almost like a Ghibli movie, but also kind of like Game of Thrones, but not really. Um, and I, I don't know, there was something about this book that I just haven't read anything like this before. And now I'm like, Samantha Shannon, I need your other books now, please. They're so good. Um, I loved this. This was so great. And I'm so happy I finally got pushed to actually read this book. Because of course, being that it's such a chunky thing, I was always like, how am I supposed to read this? But I really read a big chunk of it very, like, physically. Um, the chapters are so short that it was very easy to you know, go through them and not even realize how much progress I had made. I read like 100 or 150 pages in a day, even though I was on a business trip. I read a lot on the plane as well, despite <laughs> I was actually sitting next to somebody who just kept sanitizing her hands the entire trip. And I think she was using like the liquid at the bottom of the Lysol wipes, which is not the same as hand sanitizer. And I was like about to pass out from the fumes, but I still managed to read like 200 pages on that flight, which is great. Um, so yeah, I mean, the characters were wonderful. I really, really loved uh, following each of them. There, there was a character that I was like, if you died right now, wouldn't be that mad. I kind of think the other character should gang up and um, put you down because you are not a good person. But by the end of the book, this person, you know, things happened and I was like, I'm glad that you were not killed in that one moment because now I'm feeling things. I I just think I could have spent a lot of time with these characters, but I loved them. I, I could easily read another book that was all about them. But I was happy that it was this chunky because I got to spend all that time with them and I got to really immerse myself in the world and now I finally get it. Like, chunky fantasy is wonderful. It's so fun. It's great. I love chunky fantasy. Um, or at least I love this book and hopefully the rest of chunky fantasy is similar to this experience. Oh, I'm really hard pressed to find any flaws. This was a really great book. Um, easily a new favorite of mine. I highly recommend it. I really can't say enough good things about it. It was so wonderful. Um, and also because this vlog partially started with me just constantly talking about D&D constantly all the time. Last month was just a very hyper-focused type of month. Um, this was great because this had so many tiny elements, especially in the way that was just um, beautiful writing, very lyrical stuff, that was so easy to just pick from and go, ooh, what if that was a thing? And I wrote so many notes over the course of reading this for potential ideas for other stories. Um, of course, not necessarily completely linked to D&D, so if you're just a writer and you're like, wow, I wish I had some inspiration, this might be the way to go. Let's talk about the ending. So a lot of people really didn't love the ending of Priory, I guess. So I will say that the majority of this book, probably up until like this point, like all of this is, you know, like a lot of stuff with the characters, a lot of the different journeys that they personally have to go on. But there is one big thing that they talk about all the time, which is the nameless one. The nameless one is the big evil dragon that's supposed to show up and like scorch the earth and just kill everybody because he wants revenge. Very long ago, he was sealed up in a cave and they said for a thousand years he's stuck there, but now a thousand years is up. Everyone has been worrying about their own stuff and also preparing to meet the Nameless One and fight him up until this point. And then I think roughly about here is like the actual confrontation, the big battle, and everything that comes after that. I'm not mad. I mean, I didn't want to read an entire other, like, this much of the final battle and everything that comes after. I really didn't have a problem with the end of the book, with the wrap-up of everything. I, I thought it was great. So, we did it, Joe. We did it. Thank you, everybody, for watching this. I think this was a pretty long vlog, so thank you a lot for sticking with me throughout this entire thing. And thank you, of course, for challenging me to do this. This was really fun. I might do it again. We'll have to see what else is on the TBR veteran pile that is worthy of such a terrifying challenge. But thank you again for watching this. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that this was fun for you. This was really fun for me, so I would, I would be interested in doing it again. Let's just put it that way. I don't know how soon I would do that. But... Yes, thanks for watching. I'm Rachel. This is Let Me in the Library. You can subscribe down below if you like, leave a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.